Hi guys, we're Repiano. We're the animation project this semester. These are our six team members, and you're going to get to know us a little bit more throughout the presentation. Our instructors are Ruth and John, and my name is Melissa. I am the producer for the team. Our deliverables are twofold. The first is we're making Aglo a pre-production package that we're handing on to next semester, and Melody of Life, a 360-degree animated short that was handed to us by Catharsis last semester's team. In terms of Aglo, it is going to be designed for the traditional media, namely the screen, and it investigates the notion of uh, artistic intention versus uh, audience perception. The story revolves around a girl who has been a huge fan and ardent admirer of a particular artistic movement, namely the painting that inspired it all, oops, excuse me, and the artist that created it. However, she soon finds out that the painting in question and what made it so unique what happened on accident and that the original painting did not look the way that she knows it to look. It was destroyed somewhere between its creation and completion and when it was put on display. The artist simply took credit for it because of how much it was acclaimed. Ultimately, she has to reconcile the notion that the artist that she so admired didn't make the painting that she admired and comes to the conclusion that despite any intention that the artist might or might not have had, the painting still gives her the same feeling that it always had and that is the most important thing. In terms of the style we're going for, we are going for a more geometric look with the notion being that you can do simple and still have uh, emotional impact, more bang for your buck if you will. What we're going to be giving by the end of the semester to next semester's team is, in addition to the script we're currently working on, a comprehensive storyboard as well as concept art and a mood board so the next semester's team can hit the ground running. Our timeline is as follows. For the next three weeks, we will be working on story iteration. Then around week 11, we'll be starting, starting storyboarding and mood boarding. And finally, in week 13, we'll be making the concept art and also creating design documentation so that the next semester's team can learn from the challenges we faced and also know where they can scope down in order to maintain the integrity of the story if they hit up against a time block. Now, Julian will talk to you a little bit more about Melody of Life, our animated short. Hi, I'm Julian. I'm the sound designer on the team, and let's jump into the production. So first of all, the core of our pre-production package that we were given is the idea of exploring music and dance in different cultures. They also gave us a lot of creative freedom so we could decide the three cultures. But what that does imply is that we have to develop all the concepts surrounding that, involving the story, characters, environment, everything. Uh, this little pipeline is just a good tour as we show the presentation. Uh, so I'll start off with story, we'll move to environment, characters, motion capture, effects, and then to sound. So to start with our story, it revolves around Manny, a new mannequin fresh out of the box. He finds himself in a toy maker's workshop at night and he's looking for a sense of belonging and he's curious. So he explores his surroundings to find these three dolls. And when touched, they actually come to life and start to dance with him. Also, the environment around transforms to mimic the certain culture. Unfortunately, Manny really isn't that good of a dancer, so he falls flat and is left feeling lonely. He goes back to the box from where he came and notices something he didn't notice before, which is on the back a depiction of him dancing in different poses, showing the potential for him to dance was always there, he just needed to learn how. He tries once again to dance, and this time awakens all the different dolls since he dances successfully, and they have a grand finale. Now Meng Yang will talk to us about the environment. Hi, I'm Meng Yang. I do concept environment design for our group. Um, based on our new story, we create a new concept environment. Um, after research, our concept design idea is to create a multi-level environment for our VR space. Our art style is locked in 1914 Tollmaker Studio. You could say the user and the camera will be in the center of the desk. Um, based on our story, we design three transformation culture for culture, including India and Ghana and Brazil. You could see certain items on the desk, such like a pen coder, um, plant, and the clock will uh, change into the certain culture items, such like lighting, sculpture, and flower. Depending on the wall and the pattern on the desk also will be changed for matching the different culture. This is Ghana design. This is uh, Brazil. And uh, we're also facing a challenge to lay out the uh, uh, VR space, um, such as 
uh, try to balance the contraction and distraction in VR animation. So after many tests, we designed the camera angle and the item distance and the space distance and try to guide the user's attention in the experience. And we also, this is our art, art side for different culture. This is the, for the India. This is for Ghana. This is for Brazil. We're also working on the uh, lighting design, which is very different from um, the traditional animation. Because uh, we separate four, uh, the whole environment in, into four pieces, try to figure out the lighting contrast and the color tones. And this is our current model for the environment, including star room and the three different culture. Next, uh, Flora will talk about the character design. Hi everyone, I'm Flora. I'm the character artist of the team. So for the characters, there are four of them in our animation. Manny as our main character and three culture dolls. Start, start off with Manny. He is a blank slate. He's a new mannequin just fresh out of the box and he's looking for his own identity. So the design of him is pretty straightforward and simplistic. After all, he is just a generic mannequin. In comparison, we want the culture dolls to be more visually interesting. So we did a lot of research on the culture as for the dolls that actually exist, as well as the dances that they're going to put into the animation. So having considered all that, these are the design we have made for the dolls. And after we model them, we soon realized that texturing, in our case, is really the key of storytelling. So for example, for the Brazilian doll, as you can see in the beginning, we put him a pretty simplistic texture, but what happens is that it doesn't really look like a doll. It looks like more a CG object, which doesn't fit in our story. So we try putting him some stitches, some buttons in our texture, so it looks now more like a ragged doll. And, and we did the same effort on the other two dolls. So now the Ghanaian doll has a wooden texture and the Indian doll has a paper mache texture, which reflects the real dolls in their culture. And now Prashan is going to talk about motion capture of the dance. Hi, I'm Prashan Tayapan. I am the rigging artist and animator for our team. So uh, we had a base story in, uh, we had uh, our cultures and we had the characters uh, we modeled the characters and we were ready to animate, but we just had one problem. We didn't know where to start. So, uh, because the sound designer uh, couldn't compose um, or time the music without any dance or visual reference, the dancers couldn't choreograph a routine without the sound. The <laughs> We couldn't get any motion capture data without the dances, and uh, animation is going nowhere without all of these things. So for this purpose, we came up with our own pipeline. We consulted the dancers from different cultures uh, and recorded music based on their needs, and we, the dancers choreographed routines after that, and we then got them into the studio for motion capture. The motion capture data integration uh, itself has its own pipeline, which I'll be explaining a little bit later. Now, uh, you would think Repiano is a team of six, but technically we are a team of 22. Because for each culture, we had to find a dancer who can choreograph and do the routine. We had to find musicians who can play the instruments that belong to that culture. So, and we also had Javi, uh, a student from main campus who did play the role of Manny. We had to schedule and coordinate with all these people for various uh, recording sessions and mocap sessions. We also had Justin from main campus who did uh, integrate the motion capture data and give it to us. So uh, as you can see, the dances are really beautiful, unique, and expressive in their own way. But the models that we made didn't quite match up in their physicality. For this purpose and integrating motion capture data into these models, we had come up with our own pipeline which is this. Uh, we created custom rigs for each model. Uh, we integrated the motion capture data into these custom rigs. Uh, we baked the animation in layers and then deployed them into the scene. So yay, we have our animations. <laughs> then Julian will talk more about sound and physics. 
So there really isn't a good pipeline for integrating positional sound into 360 degree animation. Um, so what I did was I took all of these things, uh, poof, and my own homebrewed pipeline. Uh, just to clarify, positional sound is when you position a sound in a location, certain location in a space. So like if this was a sound directly to my left, regardless if I move my head, it would always be to my left. Uh, this is a little confusing, so I'll try to break it down. First we start with recording, so we take our Tetra mics and our H2 zooms and we bring those to the troops and we record them. Next, we take our recordings into editing software. My preferences are Logic and Audacity and we clean them up and make them sound nice. Uh, next, we bring it into Reaper, which is another, uh, uh, sorry, it's another DAW, which has a really good plugin called the Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation. Uh, what this allows you to do is to actually position sound in a 360 degree environment. In this little diagram, the white dot is the viewer, while the blue dot is the sound that's being positioned. Next, in order to edit it, I would actually need to be inside the Oculus watching the video to get good placement and good timing, but that's a little bit more difficult than it seems. What I needed to do was take GoPro VR, which is a 360 degree video viewer, attach that to Oculus, then through SpookSync, which can figure out the rotations of the Oculus, attach that to Reaper. Next, we need to encode the spatialization into the video so it can be read by things like YouTube and Facebook 360, which would be our final product. Sharon's now going to talk about some playtesting. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm the environment and VFX artist. So after quarter, we got some feedback from people that there are concerns about our story, controlling gaze, and emotional expression. So first, we did a playtest about our story endings. We made, we shoot the storyboard of all of the three uh, story endings to a bunch of people and got their feedback and then decided our final ending. And also we made a one minute long video about the transformation from the workshop to the Indian culture. We changed the color of the ball every 10 seconds to see whether people can focus on the ball or not. So after this play test, we understood when and why people are focusing on the dancing and when and why will people look around to appreciate our beautiful environment. So um, due to the fact that our many doesn't have a face, we also did a playtest about emotional expression. For example, we captured three videos for curiosity. For the middle one, people can fully understand it is the curiosity, but for the other two videos, people will get a little bit confused, and they may refer to other words like awe and wondering, which are not what exactly we want them to be, but very close to it. Also, we figured out our pipeline for the two main technical challenges, the VFX and the mocap animation. Now we would like to show our technical demo. So what you're gonna see first is the VFX, which is a transition from the starting objects in the room into, in this case, Indian cultural objects. And this is what it will look like every time the dance starts. Next you're gonna see Indian dancing. So moving into the coming weeks, we are preparing around the notion of being ready by softs with the full film. What this means is that by week 11, we're locking in our visuals to allow week 12 specifically for rendering. And we have left week 13 as a buffer because we anticipate that we will probably run into technical issues and we want to allow that time just in case. In summary, we are Repiano. We are making two products, Aglo, our pre-production package, and Melody of Life, our 360-degree animated film. And thank you very much. We're happy to take your questions. Mike. So the pieces you're making for Aglo, are those the pieces that you would have liked to have? And the pieces that you appreciate? Yes. Uh, we 
because we had so much creative freedom, it did give us an opportunity to work on Melody of Life from the story up, but we felt like we did lose a lot of weeks to that time that we would have liked for production. And so we're giving next semester the opportunity to, if they like what we give them, start directly in production if they would prefer to do that. Uh, Chris. Um, it strikes me listening to your presentation that you tackle, you know, half a dozen really hard problems all at the same time. <laughs> um, and I, I respect the fact that you, you go right in and try to do that. Uh, in retrospect, if there was one of those that you might have chosen, now that you know what you know, to not do, which would it have been? That's a toughie. Um, <laughs> so there were a couple things. I think we wish if we had a programmer that we could have done it in, in true VR that you could walk around in, both because that would be more immersive and also because then we wouldn't have to use the render farm, which is by far sort of the elephant in the room, as it were. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any other answers they'd like to add to that. Um, the only other thing I would say is that although it's wonderful working with 17 other people, whatever it is, I would hope that number can be reduced next time. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, you know, like I said, like when you went through all the things you're trying to do, I was like, wow, that's tough. Wow, that was tough. Right? And it's like, you know, you're learning a ton, so that's what we're We really, really are. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So why having a, would having a programmer mean you could do it in, not in 360? What does that mean? Well, none of us felt comfortable working in Unity. None of us felt like, given the time that we had available, we could have done that. So we had to, um, Sharon had experience working in Maya, as did a number of us, and Sharon's actually taken animation through the pipeline before. So when presented with the notion of, can we learn Unity from scratch, or can we work with 360 in Maya, all of us agreed that in terms of ways in which we would like to spend our time, figuring out Unity was not one of them. So the product, the melody of life being video was not a mandate from the previous team. It was a mandate that it be, um, yeah, that it be immersive, right, but not that it necessarily be in uh, 360. And in fact, the original product had um, just the cultures, no character leading you from one culture to the next, and the way that the dance would activate was when you either stepped closer to the dolls in question, or if you looked at them, so it would be gaze activated. Oh, I see some hands in the um, I just have like a question about the mocap. Uh, yeah. So like, uh, in a traditional mocap, you wouldn't have like a, you would have like a genetic mm -hmm. skeleton, you wouldn't have like extra skeleton for example, like the hair or like the fingers or something. Um, what the, uh, how hard was it for you to like translate those into like your actual dolls and everything which has to be another conflict? That sounds like a great question for Prashant. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we had come up with uh, custom rigs, but uh, figuring out to export those rigs into Motion, ca uh, motion Builder was kind of a challenge. Uh, but after a lot of research and help, we could do it. Thank you one more. How do you like Arnold compared to Mental Ray? Uh, Sharon? <laughs> yeah, actually, when I get to used to Arnold, I feel it's maybe better than Mental Ray because like the interactive <laughs> rendering view is much better than just a static view of that. So that's one thing. You guys are kind of pioneers with that because it's brand new for Maya, so I want to know. Keep calling us pioneers, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, team. Thank you guys. Thank you.